five, four, three, two. We're back at long last. The sit show with Crisco is here. Lucky enough to have Jeff Crisco. Jeff, how have you spent the past five weeks that we've not had you? Uh, let's see, Niners games, working too much. Uh, I'm now the most tenured estimator at my body shop. And if you've been uh, keeping track, I've been there less than a year. So it should be very interesting. <laughs> but I'm very excited to talk football. Um, it's been uh, it's been too long. Cool. I need you to vamp for a minute. So I, I was going to say, so check I was the audio. Say, so, so, thank you. <laughs> So with that in mind, let's get into the guys that are expected to play and who aren't expected to play. So let's start with the outs for the 10 a.m. games or the 1 p.m. games or given how many people we have overseas, uh, the, you know, Monday evening games. I'm not I don't know how clocks work. Uh, We've got Mac Hollins out, Dalton Schultz out, Jonathan Taylor was already ruled out, but I put him in the notes because um, it looks like he's going to be out three to five additional weeks. He had surgery on that thumb. Um, so probably an IR candidate for the Colts. Uh, you know, you might have to think about doing, um, something drastic with Jonathan Taylor. Rashid Shahid out, Kendra Miller out, Zach Wilson inactive and Kyle Phillips out. Not a lot of, uh, um, early morning outs that are particularly, uh, uh, devastating, uh, for the afternoon, Sunday night football, and Monday night football games, uh, Amari Cooper, T. Higgins, Pukunakua, Cooper Cup, Kadarius Tony, all off the injury report, all expected or all in. Uh, no injuries for those guys. Uh, Cooper Cup, not at 100%, so technically not injured, but not healthy enough to play well. Uh, Chris Godwin, expected to play. Travis Etienne, Sky Moore as well. Travis Etienne's pretty solid. Uh, Chris Godwin sounds like he's like 85% to play. Uh, true 50-50s, we've got two Packers wide receivers, Jaden Reed, Dontavian Wicks. Not particularly interested in, in Wicks, but Reed is an interesting uh, guy because we've got the bipocalypse going on. Dorian Thompson-Robinson and Jerick McKinnon both rolled out, so it's Joe Flacco time and perhaps Christian, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire time, question mark. Walker does have them ranked, or have uh, CEH ranked 41st this week in, uh, in um running backs. So um, this week, the most impactful thing is not injuries as much as it is the bipocalypse. We've got Bills, Bears, Raiders, Vikings, Ravens, and Saquon Barkley all on bye. Um, Why do they do that, Jeff? It's week 13. uh, It's because uh, uh, they they ran a billion calculations with uh, Amazon AI or whatever, and this is what they came up with. Welcome to the chat, Tony. Kyle Phillips was a load-bearing piece in many of his leagues, so this is his worst nightmare. I think having Kyle Phillips as a load-bearing piece is your worst nightmare, frankly. I think this is just yeah, another Kyle version. Phillips, he's a beast. And when you, and if you're in a, a pound-for-pound leagues, you know, if you need little guys to do something, then Kyle Phillips is great. Otherwise, no. I think Tony is doing what, uh, what the, what the, uh, TH fantasy voice call as a joke. I think that's I think that's what that was. <laughs> uh, we should so, have those. Oh, um, I just saw Evan for the first time because I opened YouTube. We got Lazy Boy chat going on here. Yeah, we're both in in different locations. This is cool. Yeah, chilling, I, chilling. Uh, what's up, Deku? Yeah, um, yeah. My house is kind of a disaster right now. We're we're what we're mid decorating for Christmas, so. My wife wants to point out that I'm 20 feet from my usual location. That's Dang. not that's not good air content, Annie. Try try harder. I'm also 20 feet from my normal ro- location, but it's a uh, about it's like up. <laughs> like my nor- I'm out usually about 20 feet that way. So Tony says he uh, wish it was a joke, so it is not a joke. Oh, hey Tony, don't <laughs> worry, I'm sure. <laughs> Wait, what? We cut, we didn't catch the end of that. No, it's because my dog started barking. Um, I'm sure you can go get, you know, an equally talented guy like Alameda Zacchaeus or, um, you know, uh, Ray Ray McLeod if he plays for the Niners today. My kids aren't here, so I get to sit in my living room and have the TV on football stuff. So that's nice. 
Yeah, I'm sitting in the living room. Ooh, I get to play my favorite uh, Sunday morning game, which is uh, what game did the NFL saddle me with this week? Let's see. You got oh Denver, Houston. That's a good one. Uh, Fox early, Detroit, New Orleans. That's a good one. Fox late, of course, the Niners. Hey, good good games this uh, this day. Nice. I have Juwan Johnson in a lot of leagues because he's Ryan's mid tier kind of shitty tight end of the week, and Ryan's been on a hot tear for five straight weeks with that. I felt so good uh, about when Ryan said that that was his kind of shitty mid tier tight end of the week of the week of the week uh, because uh, I've been having an ongoing battle with Walker about whether Juwan Johnson is worth uh, worth playing. Uh, on the podcast, and he was one of my streamers this week. So, um, Juwan Johnson or Brevin Jordan this week? That's a question Juwan I Johnson. ask myself a lot. I, I'm happy with either one, frankly. I think Brevin Jordan's touchdown or bust. I think he does have a good chance at a touchdown just because um, Denver's really, 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 really bad. Uh, I, think, I, think Jordan's, I think Jordan's going to get some catches inside the between the numbers. Yeah. Just because he so, has to. Yeah. Like he is one of my streams this week. So my streams uh, for tight ends are Hunter Henry, 27% roster, Juwan Johnson, 19%, Brevin Jordan, 1%. Wow. Yeah. Brevin Jordan, only like 1%. That's weird. Yeah. I have well, he like... was on, he was on Wednesday when I got these notes together. So Mark Andrews. Oh, okay. Mark Andrews going out means a lot of these touchdowns. I mean, tight ends are getting moved up. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing is they love to throw to the tight end. Um, and also with uh, uh, I'm forgetting his name. Yeah, that guy. I know you're talking about it. That guy, too. Tank Dell, playing, but playing a little hobbled. Uh, could be a little bit more to the uh, to the uh, wide receivers. Or and, sorry, to the tight ends. And uh, CJ Stroud has to throw. Mm-hmm. They don't run it. Because either. everybody else sucks. Yeah. Uh, Damian Pierce is terrible. Um, but yeah, this was a rough week, week for streaming, obviously, because not only was it like six teams on by, but a lot of injured folks. Like Aaron, a lot of injured. Aaron, welcome to the chat. Um, I don't think we've had Aaron before. Happy to have you. Maybe we have. Good morning. But sometimes it's someone's Good. real name Good and morning. I don't know them and they're like, I'm Fartmaster420 in the Discord. And I'm like, oh, right, right, right. right. Uh, half PPR. Needs a wide receiver two, and then oh, two. cloaked zero zero. Oh, yeah. cloaked you rule, <laughs> cloaked rules. Uh, half PPR needs a wide receiver two, then two RBs and two flex. Okay, so I I like cloaks like clinical level of question asking. It's it's refreshing. Uh, wide receiver two, Kirk Reed or Rice. I'm go Christian Kirk. I'm a big Rasheed Rice fan. I actually asked on the podcast this week Reed or Rice, and uh. Both uh, Mike and Walker resoundingly said Rishi, uh, Rishi Rice over Jaden Reed. Uh, but I do, I would go Christian Kirk over him as well uh, for the RB slash flex. Um, oh, two RBs and two. Okay, so wide receiver two and then two RBs and two flex. Got so it. I think that means so, pick one to sit. Yeah, so okay. I would start Kirk. I would start uh, Zach Moss. Oh man, alive! You've got a good situation on your yeah, hands he here. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. I, okay, so Kirk, Zach Moss, Tyron Williams, Alvin Kamara, and then we're just sitting one. Uh, I would start. Ooh, this is tough. Which yeah. one running back am I sitting between? Mostert, Moss, Kamara, Kyron, and Henry. Ooh. It's down between I, – I hate to say it because of who he is, but it's probably Derrick Henry. Wow. How the mighty. I mean, it's been a rough year for Derrick Henry. Let me double-check with Walker's ranks, make sure I'm not smoking crack. Uh, so Zach Walker has Zach Moss 6th, Kyron Williams 7th. Jesus. Ooh, Derrick Henry 11th. Um, but then um, – and then Raheem Mostert. 17th. Derrick Henry is playing the Colts. Man, this is tough. I say Derrick Henry. Walker says Raheem Mostert. But here's the thing. You're trying to guess which guy out of, like, all top 15 matchups are going to have a bad week. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh man, let me see. Let me double check fantasy points allowed to running backs. This is a recipe uh, for a headache. Also, welcome to the chat, Savage Elbow. We'll get to you next. <laughs> this is a recipe for a stomach ache. For like, uh, I I did the wrong thing, and it's like, well, who knows? Yeah, this is um. I don't want, uh, next question. I don't want to answer this question. <laughs> you did. You answered it. You answered it. Yeah, I would say it's probably Derrick Henry, but they all have a chance to go off. Yeah. Okay. PPR. Pick two. Olave, Collins, Warren, Achan. Achan? Oh, Achan. Okay. So, Savage, I think the... The answer to that question would be, I'm going to answer your question with another question you can answer in the chat, which would be, is your opponent rocking any of the guys from the uh, uh, Cowboys-Seahawks game? Because if so, you're probably going to need to have the upside of Devon Ashan. Um, but we saw last week what his downside was. So if it's kind of a close game, I would probably get the guaranteed points of Jalen Warren um, over Ashan. Uh, Nico Collins is a must start. Um, Chris Olave. Um, I mean, the, the saints are kind of circling the drain. Um, but going up against Detroit, actually going up against Detroit, I would go the wide receivers here, make life real easy. Go Olave, Al Pollard and cooks. Oh man. Um, so at least you, at least you sides get set, stepped DK and CD lamb and Dak. Um, I would say let's go with Collins and Achan. Let's swing for the fences. That's where I kind of lead myself. I like starting yeah. the guy that can win me the week single handedly. Yeah. So let's let's swing for the fences and go Collins and Achan. All right. So do you do you want to hear some shit real quick, Evan? Obviously. My opponent in my home league, he started Dak Prescott. C.D. Lamb, D.K. Metcalf, and Deron Bland, who had that interception and six tackles. So oh. my week was I'm I'm already at 26 percent to to win according to Sleeper. My my week hasn't even started. You're welcome, well, Savage. Well, good well. luck with HN. I hope HN goes off today. I I missed having Devon HN around. Yeah, I like rookie running backs. Um, how are are you in your home league? Uh, let's see. Right now, I am. I believe I'm eight. I'm nine and three. Wow. And I am in third place, but I have the most points scored, so I'm feeling pretty good. How many teams are in that league? Twelve. Nine and three in third place is weird for a twelve-team league. Uh, we had one guy who was a freaking wagon to start the year. He's uh, well, the two guys ahead of me are both ten and two. Um, but he's got like CMC. Uh, Travis Kelsey, um, Justin Fields. He started the year on a tear. Um, I don't know how this guy's in first place, actually. Whatever. I'm going to be in second place by the end of the year if I win out because I have the most points for, and then number one and number two play each other next week. So as long as I take care of business – oh, actually, I'm not going to win out because I'm going to lose this week. Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. So I'm probably going to get stuck in third. Um, this sucks. Do you have, have the playoff? most points for it. Do you have playoffs? I'm fighting for my life. Does your league have playoffs? Playoffs, yeah. Playoffs start in week 15. Okay. 15, 16, 17. Top six make it. I'm, I'm pretty locked in to making a playoff spot because I'm nine and three. And then like six, six through nine are all somewhere between seven and five and five and seven. So – um, I'm pretty locked into a playoff spot. Where is my water bottle? That's and let's not talk there. about Scott Fishbowl. Let's not talk about my draft night out league. Let's not talk about uh, the lateral league with Herms, folks. All right. Um, all right. So let's keep going. Uh, Decky's got 16 man non PPR with JT out and Jacobs oh, and, Rich and uh, Johnson on by. RB short this week. Droppable wide receivers are Hollywood and Josh Downs with Hollywood on bye next week. Do I drop him for D Johnson? Um, is that the Ernest Johnson? Can't think of what no, other Johnson. 16 team, no PPR. I 
could be a lot of people. Yeah. Hold on. Let me let me just throw Johnson into. Uh... Yeah. How many D Johnsons are there? Let's see. Oh, De- Deontay. Right. That's got to be Deontay. I don't know. Uh, so. Um, our, okay, because he's an RB short this week. Duh. Okay. Um, I think Deonis Johnson gets a good amount of run if you're a running back short. I, do, I wouldn't have problems dropping Hollywood for him. Um, just because you need a guy this week. And ho- I would rather keep uh, Downs than Hollywood. Downs had 13 targets last week. He's on the upswing. Uh, the Cardinals are low key super dysfunctional because um, they're not their their offense is kind of a mess. Um, so I would I would say that it's okay to drop Hollywood for Dionis Johnson. Nice, and we have a slew of questions now in the chat. Uh, Ooh, a slew. Let's do it. Uh, Miami DST cloaked has them. Their predictions okay. that Atlanta or Jacksonville are better plays. Do we have thoughts? So let me double check, see who these teams are playing. So he's got Miami. Who's he have? Miami. Oh, yeah. hold on. I'm going to that's the chat. I'm going to the I'm, chat. I'm double. No, Miami, you got to do Miami Atlanta, against Washington. Oh, God. Oh, start Miami. Yeah, holy shit. Oh, Atlanta's getting Tim Boyle. Jacksonville's getting um, uh, the, the, the Jake Browning his pants. Yeah, but, but like, but like Atlanta's playing the Jets, and the Jets have the Jets defense, so that's yeah. going to be a low-scoring game that Atlanta doesn't have to take risks in. Yeah, it is going to be uh, the. I think that I, I would start Miami. Yeah, because um, Washington could easily fall behind seventeen points in the first quarter and just have to get eighteen sacks. They're going to have to throw, throw, throw. Yeah. All right, let's help out AK here. Let's give him some 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 real AK magic. All right. Oh, uh, IBL. Uh, AK is like thirty five and three in IBL. Yeah, let's go. Okay, bench one. I might need a ceiling play because I went against four different CD lambs. Oh God. Um, bench one of Mostert at Washington, Debo at Philly, Nico at versus Denver, Dehop versus Indy, and Gibbs at New Orleans. There's only one guy here that doesn't really have a lot of upside, um, and his quarterback eats bananas whole and puts mayonnaise in his coffee. I would say that DeAndre Hopkins is the one to bench just because his upside is so limited in this passing game that's just been a complete nightmare. And his defense has been okay. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's just one of those things. We we screwed up where we were both sipping at the same time. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, no, it was my fault. So, um, yeah, I would say that DeAndre Hopkins is pretty straightforward as the guy that I would want to bench out of this group. Um, every once in a while, you, you just kind of got to give up on an offense. And I think we got to give up on the Tennessee uh, offense. It's just not working the way that we hoped it would. It is not. Okay. What else? That Dallas and Seattle game was cool, except for people like me who own Dallas's fantasy defense everywhere and scored zero or negative one or one in every league. Hey. Is that bad? Eh, it's my D. You know, either win me the game or I don't care. So then they do that. So either win me the game or stay out of my way. Yeah, win my league or I, whatever. You're going to get between zero and 10 points. Uh, Jalen Hurts is Fantasy Pro's number one quarterback this week. Mm. I don't agree. It's Brock Purdy. Yeah. It's Brock Purdy. No, I'm no, just no, kidding. I, yeah, I mean. I mean, I, it's, it's, the problem is, is. Can you throw on San Francisco all of a sudden? Yeah. I mean, you can throw on San Francisco just because, um, Mooney Ward, he's a good DB, but he tends to get a lot of penalties. Um, Ambry Thomas is okay. Uh, no Talanoa, who funga, but Jair Brown, who's been filling in at safety for him, rookie. Uh, he's really good in coverage. So, um, 
I think it more has to do with the fact that the 49ers struggle against running quarterbacks. Like the one healthy Joe Burrow game, I think he had 40 rushing yards against the Niners, which, by the way, I'm not super bitter that the Niners got the only fully healthy Joe Burrow game this year. Um, Let's see, against the Niners, he had uh, 43 rushing yards. Six attempts, 43 rushing yards. Um, So they do, because um, if I'm remembering correctly, they tend to play man on the outside, which leaves, uh, if you have a rushing quarterback, you can, they can make a hole pretty quickly for them. Okay. Uh, Cloaked has one. Picked up Jordan Love versus Kansas City to cover Josh Allen's bye. Play him or pick up Minshew at Tennessee. Ooh. Um, I kind of like Minshew at Tennessee just for the, uh, the chaos factor. They are... I think Minshew has the better matchup. Jordan Love's the better quarterback. Um, if it were me, I would probably start Minshew um, just because... Players. Go ahead. No, I 100% just stepped on you. Go for it. <laughs> oh, because because Minshew has the better matchup. Um, Titans also are really bad against receivers that have the same profile as Michael Pittman, like really bad. So I think it's going to be one of those games where Michael Pittman could make the whole week for Gardner Minshew. Like um, Titans are uh, first in uh, contested catch rate allowed. They're also first in first target read pass rate, target rate. So the first right reads getting open and he'll catch it no matter what. And Michael Pittman leads the NFL in contested catch rate um, and has the, I think seventh most first read targets in the NFL right now. So they are getting really destroyed by guys exactly like Michael Pittman. So I think Michael Pittman's going to have himself a whole day. He's going to drag Gardner Minshew along with him. Uh, they're close enough. For instance, uh, they're 13th and 14th in fantasy pros. So they're close enough that I look for other reasons to root for them besides trying to predict statistics. And I want to root for Gardner Minshew, and I want to root against Green Bay having a good quarterback. So that's what determines it for me. That's entirely fair. Uh, full PPR. Terry McLaurin versus Miami. James Conner versus Pittsburgh. Oh, that's a revenge game. Josh Downs versus Tennessee. So we're going Scary Terry, we're going Josh Downs, or we're going James Conner. Um, James James Conner is losing out on a third down role to Michael Carter. And uh, shout out to Mike Amari DiCardo, as Mike called him in the on the podcast. So Amari DiMercato. Um, so I would probably... If you want the solid answer... It's Terry McLaurin. If you want the fuck it, let's ball answer, it's Josh Downs. Okay. Which is likelier, Otani signing with the San Francisco Giants or the 49ers make the Super Bowl? I put a link in the chat that I encourage everybody to check out real quick. That's funny that AK uh, said that. It's because it's uh, Shohei Otani in a Giants hat. Just saying. I'm just saying. The photoshops are already made, folks. Shohei Otani going to the Giants. I don't see the link in the chat. Uh, I didn't link. It just kind of just came out as text, probably because a safety feature on um, uh, what's it called? Uh, YouTube setting. Let me see. Oh, why do I? Have Otani is check? a giant. How do I boot Tony? Tony said uh, Otani is a cub. I'm gonna report him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> report. Unwanted. Is it pornography or sexually explicit material? Is it child abuse? Wow, these are depressing. Hate speech or graphic violence? Is it promoting terrorism? Hate speech. Is it promotes it's terrorism? Promoting terrorism. <laughs> it's terrorism. Okay. Football terrorism. All right. Tony has been reported for. Oh wait, that removed the comment. I don't want to remove the comment. Dang it. Right. Sorry, Tony. I thought I would just make a funny. I thought I would just make a funny little message like promoting terrorism, comment, which was fine. Uh... Okay. If Shohei does go to goes to the Giants, you should definitely go to a Giants game because I, AK, I don't know if you've been to AT and T. I refuse to call it Oracle. Uh, if you if you haven't been to AT and T, it is gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. And uh, the uh, section three ten is the perfect confluence of price and view. Like it's an amazing view from section three ten or section three twelve, I believe, are both the ones on the first baseline. Uh. Does A-Chan being back affect your opinion on Mostert versus D-Hop from earlier? No. 
It's Miami I think versus. Most... It's Miami versus a nobody defense, and Miami just balls all out in every respect when that when that happens. Yeah, this might shock you, but the uh, after trading their two best defenders, the uh, Commanders' offense has been or defense has been ass. Yeah. Um, it's section yeah section three ten is the best one. Confluence of price and view. It's way up there, but you can see everything. If you've never been to AT and T, it's probably the best spot for you to be. Uh, it's beautiful stadium. I love it. I'm still trying to figure out how to unreport Tony's comment. Uh, Jimmy, G gotten, <laughs> Jimmy G has gotten knocked out of every game that AK Magic has been to. Dang, AK, chill. Um, but yeah, I would definitely go to a Giants game this year because they're going to be bad. So the tickets are going to be cheap unless they sign Shohei. But even if they don't sign Shohei, I would still go just because um, it's a it's a it's a gorgeous uh, ballpark. Granted, I've only been to like three ballparks in my life or baseball ballparks have how many have i been to i've been to dodgers been to candlestick uh at&t the coliseum the jake i guess i've only been to five okay but uh but uh yeah the that only baseball been, stadium that i've been to as many go ballparks ahead. as you have that's weird well i mean i don't i don't really go like places and when i go places my wife doesn't like baseball so uh yeah <laughs> so i don't really go to baseball games I like make, i went to i don't go places i make friends and my friends my new friends are like let's hang out sometime and i'm like okay but do you have to invite me because i will never invite you anywhere because i'm not going to be like hey i'm going to a fifth grade choir concert do you want to come yeah let's have some beers beforehand. Right? like i'm not doing anything that anybody wants to do we're gonna party party it up yeah. What um, were you saying? But, oh, because I was gonna say I I mean I've been to I went to Dodger Stadium, I went to or whatever they call it at Chavez Ravine when I went to UCSB. And then three of those were up north and then up here, and then uh my family lives in Cleveland. Well, not anymore. They all passed away, but uh my grandparents lived in Cleveland, so um that's why I've been to games at the Jake. Or whatever they call it now, progressive field. I didn't know your grandparents lived in Cleveland too. Yeah, my uh, my dad's from there. Oh, well, he's from Berea, okay. which is uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, suburb, which is where the Browns have their practice facility. Actually, the the practice facility is actually hold on, not that far from my grandma and grandpa's house. See, Browns practice facility, because I remember when I went there for my grandma's funeral, I drove past it and I was like, whoa. The Browns. I should take Grandma Ooh, sometime. Gross. Oh wait. Uh, ooh. Uh, to I don't know why I know my. I still remember <laughs> my. Uh, my grandparents' uh, address off the top of my head. So they're a mile and a half from the Browns practice facility driving. So as the crow flies, they're less than a mile. So, interesting. Here, this room, the room was split on this. Brees Hall versus Atlanta or Chris Olave versus Detroit PPR. Jesus. Um, <coughs> I would... Mm, I would... Mm, that's tough. Uh, I would probably go Chris Olave uh, just because the matchup is way better. And there's not the, oh, my God, the Jets are terrible factor. If Baker Mayfield, if the if the Jets had signed Baker Mayfield instead of Aaron Rodgers, what would the record be right now? They're four and seven. They're four and seven. I would say they'd probably be six and five. Okay. I've asked. Everybody just off, not on camera, but just in my life. And every single person said six and five. Really? Yeah. Every single person. I've asked like 10 people. This. I think it's because everybody's like, the defense is really, really good. But then you also have to factor in Gardner Minshew. So Gardner, <laughs> they can't be that good. What do you mean? I mean, uh, the Jets. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The defense is really, really good for the Jets. But you're like, ooh, Gardner Minshew is not. So. Oh, I, I said... uh. 
I meant to say, maybe I didn't say it. I meant to say Baker. Oh, Mayfield. you said Baker May Baker Mayfield. You did say Baker Mayfield. Okay. Uh, same same thing goes though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I would like Gardner Minshew on the Jets. He that would be fun. Well, in the New York culture. By the way, shocking, shocking of all shockings, uh, Aaron Rodgers probably not going to play this year uh, from an Adam Schefter report. So, or Ian Rappaport. So, why, for why, all... why, why haven't they collectively decided to not talk about Aaron Rodgers ever again? Because Aaron Rodgers gets a lot of attention and he wants a lot of attention. So, he keeps doing things that get him attention. Why don't I just all ignore him? Maybe he'll go away. Uh I mean, has that worked for any for anybody else who's involved in QAnon? What did Tony say? <laughs> Tony was like, Aaron Rodgers said he's going to go hang out in a cave for three days. How is that different from whatever he does in his personal life with no friends? Like, Yeah. I mean, I don't know what – Aaron Rodgers is uh, – he's an interesting fellow. Everybody's like, oh, you know, he's uh, – you know, this is because he's from California. It's like, no, man, it's because he's from northern, northern California. Uh, he's in freak territory. Yeah. The Wairika. As a yeah, I, you know, Oroville, the only the only area to try to to vote to secede from the union for uh, COVID stuff. All so. my, I grew up in Northern California, as did you, and all of my interactions with Northern Northern California have been weird. I remember. Oh yeah, I remember we did academic decathlon, and everybody had to bring souvenirs for everybody else. And Modoc, which is north or north of California, brought us chunks of wood with Modoc burned into it. And I'm like, right. what the hell is this, man? What am I going to do with Modoc, wood, man? Modoc like Ant-Man and the Wasp? Maybe, no, that's maybe, Mania. Maybe I'm thinking of a different county. They're all no, it's, it's M-O-D-O-C, but then there's a character named Modoc. Is that, uh, that, M-O-D-O-K. that is already more interesting than all of my thoughts about Modoc County. Anyway, except, okay, the one interesting thing is in Wairika, there's actually a talk called Wairika, not Eureka, Wairika. And I'm just, I know you know that, Jeff, but I'm just saying for the people yes. out there. Uh, in Wairika, there's a bakery called Wairika Bakery, and Wairika Bakery is a palindrome. Oh, it is. Yeah. Well, that's cool. <laughs> that is cool. I didn't realize that. Yeah, Wairika Bakery is a palindrome. Yeah. So that's where um, we are right now, northern, northern California. Yeah. It's real boring, y'all. It is real boring. Uh, I also know that I will see some real freak behavior if I see a state, of, if I start seeing states of Jefferson flags or state of Jefferson flags, uh, because they're, that's where the freaks are. Yeah. Past Sonoma County until you get to the college town, like I think it's Bend, Oregon. It's real. It might as well be West Texas. It's it's my theory that every state has a as a part of them that's actually the South. Yeah, and he says Humboldt, so that's valid. She says Humboldt. Oh yeah, good. Humboldt. All right. Oh, we actually have a question, Jose, in the chat. Crazy week. Twelve team PPR. Start three. Kamara, Kyron Williams, Etienne, Zach Moss. Truly have no idea this week. Wow. Um. I would, ooh, boy. So ETN's supposed to play. Uh, let's see, who who's Kamara's playing? I, I kind of said yes to Kamara they off said the D- rip. Detroit. <clears throat> so Kamara, okay, so De- Kamara's a must start. I kind of feel like ETN is these a are must all, start. These are all must starts. These are, four these are must all must starts. starts. Yeah. Yeah. Are all is like there any way to start all guys. four of them? Top six guys. Oh boy, I would say um <clears throat> I think I bench Kyron. I think I bench Zach Moss. That's fair. Um it's just the Browns like down to down, they're they're a good defense, but uh they do allow a lot of uh, explosive runs. They do. Don't they, they allow the high they do it. They allow the highest explosive run rate in the NFL right now. So they're um they're uh, a defense that you can beat up on. Um, and, you know, who else is there? Royce Freeman. Like, they gave Kyron, like, 24, 25 carries last week. So. So I would say 
probably bench Zach Moss. But what about That's fourth round r- rookie they traded up for Zach Evans? He's there. Oh boy, yeah. Ooh, this guy. We're on it. We're going on an adventure with Evan. Yeah. Um, so I would say that's my... really, that's really tough though, Jose, because those are all like top five to six plays this week. Like, <laughs> yeah, I would probably say bench Zach. I don't know, but what if Travis Et- Etienne's the hard part because, uh. They could bring him along slowly against the Bengals because they might not really need him. That is maybe, true. Maybe he has ETN the is the to play it safe. He has the lowest floor. Yeah, let's say ETN because he has the lowest floor. I'm going to go ETN. I'm changing my mind, even though they're all top five starts. I'm good with that. Yeah. And isn't that a Monday night game? Uh, that is Monday night. That's why so I'm struggling could, with it. Something so could happen, too. Something That's weird true. could happen where they're like, nah, he didn't he had a he pulled up in practice. Yeah, or he didn't feel he didn't he wasn't feeling it in warm up, so we're gonna play it safe and not play him this week. Yeah. Why are these people uh, dancing on the moon? <clears throat> are you watching on? the Carly Ray Jepsen video? Is that Carly Ray Jepsen? I don't know. There's a Carly Ray Jepsen video where I'm watching they're Fox. dancing on the moon. I'm watching oh, Fox. okay. All right, so we got another question. CJ Stroud or Justin Herbert? Um, I would say I would probably go Stroud uh, going uh, going up against Denver. I think that one's going to be a <clears throat> that one's going to be more of a uh, a shootout game. So I'd probably take Stroud. Yeah. Oh yeah, over Herbert. I am benching Definitely. Justin Herbert in my my two quarterback league this week. For whom? Kyler and uh, Tua. Okay. Yeah. I I'm, I'm in a very nice situation. Uh in our experts league I have Mahomes and Tua. And you have Mahomes and Mahato? Yeah, you'd think I'd be doing better. I uh I was uh pilloried on the podcast this week because I said that I liked the those are four words, not if you bundle them commercial. And Walker was not a fan of that commercial. You so have, I was pilloried. You have done the um, impossible. You have What's that? made me Google a word. Wow. What did I what did I have to Google? You know have what you Google? Pilloried. Oh, pilloried? That's I rarely don't know a word. To attack or ridicule publicly. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. very accurate uh, use of the word because Walker called me out on the uh, Walker was said they were not a fan on the podcast. Oh yeah, when I but, teach kids no not to ask why a word is a word because they will get an explanation and it will involve five hundred years of history and they will not want to be in the room by the end of it. Yeah, uh, fornication under consent of the king. Yeah, just like not- they're like. Why do we have this word instead of using this other more common word? I'm like, well, blah, 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 blah. The Germanic wait, influence wait. and the Anglo-Saxon influence came in and did more usage and blah. And they're like, oh, my God, shoot me. And then you have the Latin influence, the Romance languages, French and Spanish and, and English. If you really think about it, English is more of a, a, a borrower language than an actual language. And the English kids are like, is not... Shut up, Mr. Hoobler. In any... Yeah, in any English is not a language. English is like Mm-mm. a car that you took parts of other cars entirely to build the car. Ooh, OJ's asking Purdy over Herbert this week. Yes. Uh, I'm looking for any excuse to get off the Herbert train. If I'm yeah. on the Herbert train. So yeah, let's go Purdy. Come on, uh, Barbie. Definitely let's not go biased. Purdy. Definitely not biased. Definitely not biased. I'm going. I'm all out 49ers this week. I'm also wearing 49ers shirt under my hoodie. It's the dumbest shirt I own. It's uh, a bunch of uh, Disney characters, and it says 49ers, and they're all dressed up like football players. Where did you get that shirt? Uh, the internet. I don't remember where. Okay. In short, Jeff wants you to be a Barbie girl, OJ, and let's go, Purdy. Boo. Oh, by the way, Evan, your kids are uh, Assassin's Creed fans, right? Sure. 
Uh, new one is very hard if you're used to the new uh, version of the way that the game controls. What's the new it goes, what, What's the uh, setting? Night Century Baghdad. Didn't they already do that? I don't think so. Wasn't that the original? No. The original was... Um, I think it was... Uh, hold on. Assassin's Creed setting. I don't think it was 9th Century Baghdad. I want them to do like Communist Russia and you're a KGB assassin. That would be cool. I want to climb one uh, of those weird buildings. I want to... I, oh, yeah. With the domes? The onions? Yeah. yeah, the weird bulbous tops. I want to climb that. Okay, so that's what I thought. It was the holy... It was Israel, Palestine, and Syria. That was the original one. That's what I thought. Oh, I guess that's not Baghdad. No, because that because that one was the um, against the uh, what's it called? It was in the Crusades. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then two was uh, Italy. What uh, of... what's so hard about the new one? Uh, no, it's, 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 uh, uh, you know how like Odyssey, Valhalla and Origins have all been more like RPGs with like a robust, like fighting system. Yes. I, in fact, don't actually let them play the game. I let them do the history where they just wander around learning history. Oh, okay. Stuff. Well, the, okay. Well, this one, it's, it's a, it goes back to like sneaking. Sneaking is very important in this one. Um, stealth, like is, I put stealth is the one game element I'd never could get behind. Yeah, like I went, I was like, I started it up and I was like, oh, I'll just run through these guys and just cut them all up. And I got my shit wrecked because I was like, oh, you're like super weak now. Like they, you don't have, you're not juiced up like you were before. So you actually don't want to fight if you can help it. Huh. Not a fan. I'm a six yeah. foot three, I'm a six foot three, 200 pound guy who teaches elementary school. Walking through the halls is my stealth role play. Like, because you're I'm just... always like, duck around the corner, uh-oh, almost ran into a kid, got a spin move, okay, got a, oh god, if I run into any of these kids, they're gonna go to the hospital, like, that's, yeah, that's my life. Yeah. Speaking of running into stuff going to the hospital, how about that, a Cybertruck crash, huh? Oh, a Cybertruck already crashed? No, it was, a like, a test video, and it's really bad. Like, it's a front-end impact, and, like, the back wheels are wobbling, because it's compromised the suspension. Wow. Why did they post it's not great. That? It's not great. Uh, it was a safe. I think it was an independent safety test. Oh wow, those back wheels wobble for no reason. Yeah, that's really bad. In my professional opinion, that's re- that's it, bad. Does it not have any crumple zones? Uh, that's the operating theory. What? Why? Crumple zones are good. Uh, be- but crumple zones aren't manly. All right, Jose says uh, start to. Um, my little emoji things over part of this. Uh, Chase, hold on. Start two wide receivers, twelve team PPR. Chase Waddle Pittman. I would go. I. I would go Pittman as an obvious one, like for me at least, uh, just because I think he's going to tear up. Uh, uh, the um, not the Colts. Titans. The Titans. And then I would say Waddle against Washington. I'd say it, but I... You got to get a piece of that Miami offense against Washington. Yeah, you got to get a, You got to get a piece of that Miami offense. Um, man, Jose, your team is incredible. Because uh, you have... You're all tough, tough starts, tough sets. Um, I would say all three of these guys are wide receiver ones this week. I will say let's get a part of that Miami offense and let's go with Pittman. Um, Who would have thought week thirteen we'd be benching Chase over Pittman and Waddle? Yeah, but if you if you tell me to shove it and start Chase over one of them, I wouldn't be too upset either. Yeah, I think I think Pittman and Waddle are no a tier higher than Chase. I, I, I think so. I, I think, think that we could. I also think Indianapolis and Tennessee is more likely to be a shootout than Cincinnati and Jacksonville. Well, 
That's fair, but you could also have Jamar Chase getting some garbage time touchdown at the end. Well, yeah, he's Jamar Chase at the end of the day. Yeah, there is that. He is still an undeniably Jamar Chase. It's just he's also undeniably Jake Browning. Jake Browning also a NorCal boy. NorCal Jake Browning or from... Nord NorCal? NorCal. He's from my area. He's uh, He went to Folsom High School. Okay. By Folsom Lake. Go Folsom Pistons. Also Folsom Prison. Oh, yeah. Uh, from Johnny Cash? Yeah. Oh, no, he did San Quentin. I thought he did live at Folsom County. Oh, he did do Folsom. That's right, yeah. it is Folsom County. Folsom Prison Blues, yeah. San Quentin was separated from the place I worked myself through college in by a field. It was a mattress oh, warehouse. Oh, boy. It was a mattress warehouse, then a field, and then San Quentin. Dang. We always all right, so, of... you worked at... what? so you worked at a mattress store. So tell me all about it being a front. Uh, it was a genuine store back then because this was the 90s. They just, mm, I don't know. Buy, I'm pretty sure it's money laundering. You couldn't buy mattresses on Amazon mm. back then. So you actually had to go to a store and try the beds to see which bed you wanted and then get the bed. You, there was no online ordering. So now it's complete laundering front. It makes no sense at all uh, any other way. Yeah. Well, I've also heard that it's like the other thing is like, yeah, if you sell one mattress, the margins on those are so big that it's like that's all you need to do that day. Yes. Yes, the margins. Uh, you, you could sell a mattress and mark it down like 40 percent and be like, cool. If you sell a box spring, which is just five dollars worth of wood and metal, if you sell a box spring, you're done. You hit the margin. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just realizing how much margin there must be on box springs because yeah. that's like. Don't get box springs, y'all. Just put boxes under your bed frame. Like, there's, it, oh, it does nothing. We switched to slats, and it is way, like, our bed's not 600 feet in the air now. Yeah, that's the whole point of box springs, is, is elevation. There's, yeah. There's no other purpose. Yeah. Howdy, M. Um, yeah, we're not, there's some, been some tough questions today. Uh, not a lot of them, but they've been they've been real doozies. Who is M? What's up, Minnie? I thought Min I was about to say is M Minnie. No. Who's M? Unless, unless uh, Minnie is uh just uh posting on alt. Posting on alt, yeah. Um. Oh man, I'm scared for the Niners game today. Okay. Niners Eagles. That one has me panicked. That'd be worried all week. Especially because if the Niners lose a football game, everybody won't <laughs> shut up about how terrible Brock Purdy is. Don't they get the Ravens next? Uh, no, they get uh, Seahawks. Oh. Ravens is Christmas. Ooh, fun. I'm pretty sure it's, it's Seahawks, Commanders, Ravens, the next three games. Okay. That Ravens game is going to be something. Super Bowl uh, preview and rematch. Yeah. Yeah, Niners might get an <laughs> NFC Championship game preview and Super Bowl preview of the same year. All right, we got Thielen versus Tampa or Kirk versus Bengals, full PPR. I'm going Christian Kirk. Uh, I don't know what the Bang or the uh, Panthers' offense is going to look like. Uh, they fired everybody, um, including the only good coach in their uh, whole um, coaching room. So I'm really worried about starting a Panther this week. Thielen came down to earth last week, didn't he? Thielen's been kind of rough lately um, by Thielen standards. Oh, yeah, they fired uh, uh, Frank Reich. They fired their head coach, Minnie. So I'm um, I'm going to stay away just to see what's going on because the yikes. Thielen had two yards more than, than Minnie. That's right. Uh, yeah, Thielen's been a little rough lately. Um, you know, hopefully they start to go back to him. Like, one of two things is going to happen. Either one... They're going to play out the string and try to run the ball as many times as humanly possible just to get the games over with, with as quickly as they can, which is something that we've seen before. Um, after Washington fired, uh, what's John Gruden's brother's name? Jay Gruden. They did that. Um, or we could see like a Raiders effect where they try to go crazy with it. But until I know what it's going to be, I'm going to stick with Christian Kirk because I know that the Bengals suck and I know the Jags are really good. 
And I think this is going to be kind of a get right game for the J- the Bang- the the Jags against the Bengals because they um, can get right. Kind of like I said against the Cowboys and Commanders uh, on Thanksgiving, where I was like, yeah, this one is a, a game where they know they can get everybody fed, so they're going to try to. I think that's what the Jags game is going to be against the Bengals uh, tomorrow. Panthers head so coach. I would, go, I would go Kirk. Go ahead. Panthers interim head coach Chris Tabor can't pronounce the word orange, according to what? his players. He can't. He pronounces. What's he say? Orange. Uh, according to their kicker, he says owing. Owing. Yeah, he must have a major speech impediment. Yeah, I was gonna say that's like owing. And he says, yeah, he. The kicker says they work in the word orange into play calls just to screw with them. Wow. Orange JD. That's the guy you're gonna trust your fancy wide receiver to. He's also their special teams coach, so I don't know what he knows. Oh Jesus! I mean, that's rough. I don't even know what special teams coaches do. They're really? like, hey, kick the ball between the uprights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much it. And you're on the hands team. Yeah. That's it. He- See that ball? Kick it. Kick it as far as you can through through those two yellow things. Not sure. And then it's and then it's the Mr. Burns uh the softball episode of The Simpsons where he's like, "I told him to do that after he makes it." That episode is 30 years old by the way, if you want to feel older than dirt. Well. I uh we love NFL history. And there's a mm-hmm. lot of there's a lot of that episode in the 1910s and 20s where colleges were like, oh, the rankings are done by record. So let's like hire a bunch of pros for one game and just beat the crap out of them. A bunch then, of ringers. Yeah. And then we'll win like 148 to nothing and we'll go up in the rankings and stuff like that. Speaking of uh, rankings, who won the SEC championship last night? I, uh, the, I don't know. I only followed the Dr. Pepper tuition challenge at halftime uh let's see alabama stuns number one georgia to win SEC oh, right. championship. right now they're talking about alabama <laughs> making the playoffs and so i watched some of the game but really all that mattered to me was the pat mcafee uh top 10 anime betrayal that went on what happened uh oh man it was uh uh so they were doing their picks before the game and pat mcafee's like uh, 29 straight wins, back-to-back national champions, and he starts singing the uh, uh, Georgia fight song and, like, the crowd singing along with them, and he's, like, loving it and all that stuff, and then when they stop, he goes, and I'm taking Alabama, and everybody's like, oh, oh, oh. Um, uh, All right, so we got... Oh, go ahead. No. Kittle yeah. versus Eagles or Sam Laporta versus Saints. Um, George Kittle has been on a tear lately. Uh, I think he fell back down to earth last week. Um, yeah, three for 19 last week. He was on a tear before that. Um, double check in Saints against tight ends here. It, they're like, they're both top five starts. Um, if you need a boom, if you need a boom, like a guy who could get you 125 yards and a touchdown, that would be George Kittle. If you want a guy who, has the higher floor, I would go um, with Sam Laporta. Because Sam Laporta is pretty much guaranteed like 10 PPR points, but he has no chance of getting 20. And George Kittle could get 20, but he could also get two. And yeah, that was, I don't even like Pat McAfee because I think he's a, his shtick's a little uh, overwrought, but um, that was amazing. I watched it probably 10 times yesterday. It's so good. 11, two <sighs> hours, two hours. That's when they choose the college football playoffs. Oh boy, that's the most important thing that's happening today. It's the I first think. time in years it hasn't been like a shoe in. It's and gonna it's, be They just need to expand it this year. It's gonna be UCLA. No? Is UCLA in the top four? No. Do they have a <laughs> do they have a football team? They do. It's coached by Chip Kelly. 49ers legend Chip Kelly. Oh god. Um, no, I don't watch college football. I watched like 20 minutes of the SEC championship game. And I it looked... Ohio it, State. Yeah. 
Ohio State, how's your boy? How how you feeling about your boy? Um, they're great, except Michigan cheats, and so they won because they cheat. They do cheat. You and you and uh Mike, um, head to head, uh, going at it. Mike's we call Mike Michigan man on the podcast. Well, they cheat. So they do cheat. The best was a couple of weeks ago when uh, they were like. Uh, Michigan relie- relieves such and such coach, like some downline coach of his duties, and is like no reason given. Like, buddy, we know the reason. Yeah. <laughs> we, you don't have to. You, you didn't give a reason because you don't have to. We all know what happened here. And all like the talking heads are like, Ohio State's lost to Michigan three straight years. What does this mean for Ryan Day? And it means it means Michigan started cheating three years ago. We all know it. We have evidence. Um, Ooh. Minnie has a follow up. I like that get out of jail free card. Yeah, Minnie has a follow up. Okay. Uh, I don't remember their question. They could start both, both being Kittle and Sam Laporta, depending upon if you think Quentin Johnson is ahead of Christian Watson, Ridley, Sam versus Saints, and Kittle versus Eagles. I do not. I think Quentin Johnson is a very bad football player. Um, I kind of clocked it. I kind of clocked it in the draft process where – He's less than the sum of his parts. Like he is, he is a, a 6'4", 215, and he gets bodied by, uh, you know, one hundred eighty pound defensive backs. Um, so, I don't think that QJ is ahead of Watson, Ridley, uh, Laporta, and Kittle. So I would actually, I generally say don't flex tight ends, but in this case, uh, um, Quentin Johnston is basically a bad tight end. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's saying he's going to start Watson and Ridley and then put one of those tight ends in. I could start both depending on if you think Quentin Johnson oh, is ahead of – Yeah, Yeah, start both. Yeah, start both over QJ. Yeah, yeah I, I keep – Quentin Johnson reminds me of what happened with Trey Sermon, which was like – Trey Sermon also less than the sum of his parts, but we all were like, maybe the offense will work for him. And it's like, oh, no, he's just really bad. Dang, Evan got further away. Evan's given us the the wide shot. I did. So you can see my full shoulder, Chris. Yeah. Instead of uh, watching me, we could watch my dog sleep. Although she's in the shadows, so I don't know how good of a a look that's going to be. We can watch my wife sleep. Ooh, let's do that. <laughs> I know. I'll save that for the only fan. There you go. Uh, oh. There is we that, go. Is, that, is, the that, is your dog the white thing on the chair? Uh, she's laying on the white thing on the chair. Oh. She's black. She's black and in the shadows, so I hope everybody likes seeing a uh, uh, shadow. Oh, you can see her head. Um... You should just but yeah. You should just say the white thing was your dog, just for future content. Just for future content, the white thing. Yeah. Oh, it looks I like need... my dog got blown up by an RPG. Yeah. I need to please vamp. I need to plug in my computer. Okay, I'm gonna vamp. Uh, blah, I'm Dracula. Blah. Is that what they mean by vamping? Um, no. Uh, I was I talk about it on the podcast a lot, and I would just like to say that this year has been. A lot of fun and very interesting and the Chinese curse may live in interesting time sort of way. Um, there's been very little consistency, which has been horrible for trying to play fantasy football. It's been great for um, covering fantasy football because there's always something to talk about. Like last year, uh, behind the scenes, Walker, Mike and I were all about to stab each other in the head uh, on the podcast because we were talking about the same stuff every single week and we were getting very weary of it. But this year it's so, it's so much fun to try to cover, but it's a nightmare to try to play. And usually it's the, you know, this time of year, it's the opposite. It's like, Oh, we're starting this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, don't even have to think about it. And then uh, trying to like cover it has been, would, would be hard, but now it's the opposite. So um, very fun year to try to crack the code every week. Um, also means it's been, been a very difficult year, but, um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's been very fulfilling. This is, 
my first full year back to working full time and doing the website, and uh, it's uh, it's been a challenge, but it's been uh, a lot of fun at the same time. It's been my Did first I, year I, working full. Time. Time. Yeah, it's been my first year working full time since. Shit, <laughs> I'm since useless. you pooped. I'm useless. <laughs> I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a drain on society. Oh, okay. Oh man, I provide uh, no value. Yeah. Oh, never thought about that. Thank God I figured it out now and not, you know, while I was being a drain. All right. Spears versus Indy or single teddy bear versus Denver full PPR? Mm. What, I'd go Singletary. What's single teddy bear? Uh, Devin Singletary. Devin Singletary. Um, I, would, I would go Singletary just because um, – if I'm gonna ben- if I'm gonna say to bench Derrick Henry against the uh, the uh, Colts in that question from earlier, then I'm gonna stay consistent with it. Hey, thanks, Benny. I really appreciate that. That's that's kind of why we do it. I love I I love doing this because I love helping people with their fantasy. I love I love talking fantasy football with people. Um, so I, I'm, you know when they say like, Hey, uh, like if you had the chance to do anything you wanted, what would you do? It it would be talking fantasy football all day, every day. So, um, really appreciate it. It's, it's, it's a lot of work, but like I said, uh, love it. Uh, love doing, love doing this with, uh, everybody. Um, How did it take me three years to come up with the sit show with Crisco? I don't know. I really feel like that's a, a, a YP. Yeah. I feel like that was right there. Yeah. Yeah, it, it it was kind of right right there, but oh well. Although I did like sit and starting with Tony Martin, I think that I need to phase out so that, so Tony can take over just because the names that much better. I need a middle initial for the meter. It needs to be sitting or starting with Tony Q Martin or whatever his middle initial is. I don't know. Ooh, is Tony Q? I don't know. Thanks, OJ. Really appreciate that. I I it means a lot. It it really does. I'm sure I know his middle name if I were to think about it, which I won't. Um, yeah. is it, oh, I think I know what it is. I'm not going to blow up his spot, but knowing yeah. what his, uh, his, um, WordPress name is, I think I know what his middle name is. <laughs> is it, does it start with a J? No, I think it starts with a, if it's what his, uh, thing is, it starts with an M. Tony M. Martin. That's Tony's going to come back to the stream and be like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> why did I get, <laughs> why am I getting a hundred spam calls all of a sudden? Uh, uh, why, why are they work. talking about Tony, sitting or starting with Tony M. Martin doesn't work you have the double M he's going to have to change mm-hmm. that if he wants to come back yeah. alright um, Minnie's got a question full PPR Alave versus Detroit in at the moment Devontae and Addison on a bye so I have Pickens in them at the moment as well uh, Elijah Moore <laughs> you Cleveland and Greg Dorch are available if I drop Pickens, Addison, Shahid I would personally um, rather start. I would rather start Dorch than Pickens, and you can drop Shahid to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah, I like. Yeah, Dorch because. <clears throat> yeah, Dorch is this like break glass in case of emergency guy right now, where they haven't needed him, but they don't have Michael Wilson this week, um, so. Uh, that's moving him up the the depth chart, and uh, Marquise Brown's banged up, and um, so it could be him and Rondale Moore. But he has 17 targets in the last two games, so um, that's an incredible uh, target volume that he could have. Can't torch the Dorch. Can't Dorch the Dorch. Can you scorch the Dorch though? No. It rhymes. Uh. You can you can beat him though. But you can't I'm watching. I'm watching. So I have a, a ESPN a fancy <laughs> fancy show on, and they're saying they're having like a like a flex discussion. They have Brian Robinson there. Brian Robinson is like a top fifteen running back on the season. Like, what are they doing? Yeah, boy, I felt so slick when I traded Brian Robinson and Noah Fant for Aaron John Aaron Aaron Jones week four. 
Oh boy. And that's why and that's why I don't trade, ladies and gentlemen. If you ever wonder why I never trade, this is why. Yep. Yeah, Somehow. and uh, Minnie's right. Uh, Rondale is getting fewer targets. I think it's like three or four over the last couple games. It's, he, uh... means, he means Elijah Moore, though. Oh, Elijah Moore. But Elijah Moore is bad at football, and so is Cleveland's quarterback. So <clears throat> Elijah Moore is very interesting because they're using him a lot like they use Jarvis Landry in so much as it's like, I think I said on the pod this week, I think it's like four catches for 38 yards is like the the, the median game. Yeah, ha, me and he did meet Rondale. Take that, Evan. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, Rondale, I hate to say it, I don't think Rondale is going to happen. Um, this is, cr- oh, this is crazy to me, this this show that's going on. Mike Clay and Field Yates chose six flex options. They did not choose Brian Robinson, who is a top 15 running back on the air. They chose Josh Downs, Jaden Reed, who is hurt, Devin Singletary, Deontay Johnson, or She Rice, Curtis Samuel. Interesting. Maybe, maybe they're just assuming that Robinson's a start at this point. I mean, maybe. maybe I guess. They're... Yeah. Many watching none of the Browns has been very hel- has it, it, that's beneficial to your health. I had to watch them against the Niners. So yay. Yay, yay. I'm going I like how I've just gone full full homer today. I'm just I'm going crazy. That's fine. How are they pulling a four-hour show out of college play uh, football playoff ranking show? Is this a four-hour is crazy. show? Yeah, it's 9 a.m. Oh. to 1 p.m. They announced it? Wow. You know they can this year. There's, I could, I could debate. I don't watch college, but I could still debate uh, number four and number three, frankly, for three hours, four hours. So, uh, the CS game, they have to fill 24 hours somehow. That is correct, actually. Um, and then Minnie's saying, see, Quentin is available, is a no. Mims is available. Houston's susceptible as a perimeter player. I think Mims is a, it's a, he is a home run play. I do think that he's the uh, most dynamic receiver in that room, but he's getting, he hasn't gotten more than three targets since week three. So, He's just not getting the volume to justify it, and, and which sucks because I really like Marvin Mims as a player. I think he's a talented player. But, oh, well. It's what it's, as the kids say. Wow. It, let me tell you, Minnie, it's not a Brit thing. It's a, uh, I'm, I, I think it's crazy as a guy who doesn't watch college football that there's like, a panel like there's a panel of overlords who decide who goes to the playoffs. Do you want to know who's on that panel? Is it me? Condoleezza Rice. Oh, she's a huge football fan though. Yeah, she's on that panel. <laughs> That's wild to me. Like Condi Rice, Condi Rice's uh um like reclamation project is being on this uh college playoff council. I don't know if that's what it's actually called, but it's just really funny because like uh, like Sean Spicer's was dancing with the stars and hers is college football. It's so funny that just the random things that these, uh, I won't get political. So I'll just say these former uh, white house officials do in their off time. Uh, Oh, Texas and Alabama made it. They've already announced it. Wow. Texas, yeah. the whole state, the whole state. Wow. And Alabama who lost to Texas. Interesting. But not Ohio State, who won every game that wasn't against a cheater. So, yeah, that's really difficult then. Yeah. Because I know Georgia was one before yeah. last night. Yeah. So you have to figure that Georgia's got to make it. They didn't. They didn't? They did not. Michigan, Washington, Alabama, and Texas. That's who made it? Yep. Washington? The Huskies? Yeah, they're they they were suing. They're number two in the nation. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And they got to have a Pac-10 team, just because you know, nostalgia. Rip, rip in peace to the Pac-12, yeah. Pac-10 slash Pac-12. Yeah. Elbows back. Uh, would it be crazy to sit Chase for Ashan? Um. Is it PPR? Oh, Evan's favorite question. Yeah. If it's PPR, I would start Chase. If it's not, I would start Ashan. 
Just get that home run in there. If it's PPR, definitely Chase. What if it's standard? What is going on? What? I'm going crazy because ESPN's a weird color now, but only part of it. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. Uh, PPR, I would go Chase. Yeah, just go Chase. By the way, I would like to say huge glove, huge shout out to Liz Loza, who is on ESPN right now. And I remember when she started as being a call-in guest on the the Fantasy Football Guys podcast. Not Football Guys, but the Fantasy Football Guys podcast. She would call in and have a little segment once a week. I remember when she was just making shit from her apartment in YouTube. Yeah. And she I mean, shout big. out to Liz Loza. Yeah. <laughs> Did we say Pickens over Dorch or the other way around? We said Dorch over Pickens. Yep. Dorch is going to get a bunch of bunch of volume. Pickens might have a highlight play, uh, or he might have three back shoulder fades that are all out of bounds. That is true. I would not want to root for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh IMO. Get it? Like like P, they're playing each other. Pittsburgh and P. Yes. <laughs> I think uh, Deku uh, Etienne is supposed to play this week. Um, there are some guys that would pivot off of Etienne for, but Tyler Algier is not one of them. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, um, it seems if last week's any indication, um, Arthur Smith is trying this crazy new thing where he gets the ball to his best players. And because Bijan had a ton of touches last week. So I think that the Algier thing might be a little, little uh, uh, past its prime at this point. The, yeah, the yeah. weeks where we could flex Algier. Yeah, you got to risk ATN. Yeah, I would risk I would definitely ATN risk ATN. It's like, could be the number one running back this week. And no one He that could. Guy. He could also, do, yeah. He could also not play, but it, the risk is way better. The reward is way better than the risk. What do you feed your dogs? Dog food. What type of dog food? Oh my god! Uh, Tony got banned from the comment section. By the way. I did. Oh shit! Sorry. Okay, I'm on it. You posted it on Twitter. Fuck my bad, dude. Shit. <laughs> oh man. Um. It says. It says, it's still, when I click on his name in the chat, it still says I can remove him. Oh, don't do that. That's funny. Maybe undo the banning of that comment. I've been trying. Like, it doesn't have any. That's so funny. Yahoo does not have any positive moderator buttons. It's all like remove, report for terrorism, hide them. I also stand with Tony. Minnie said, hashtag I stand with Tony. I also stand with Tony. I also stand with I guess, Tony as the I guy didn't... who pushed the buttons. <laughs> Um, um, Falcons, wow. a sneaky, solid team that defense can make stops at key moments. Yes, Minnie, that is what makes this team so frustrating. Right. Jeff, is they are... Jeff might disappear what? from the screen. Jeff might disappear oh, no. from the screen for a second while I go into the actual YouTube to try and get Tony back. Oh, Evan's, Evan's trying to get Tony back. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's what makes the Falcons so frustrating is that they have, like, Drake London, B. John Robinson... Kyle Pitts, they have a solid, not spectacular, but solid offensive line. Desmond Ritter's ass, and so is Arthur Smith, and it's bringing the whole team down. Defense is good. Like, they should, for all intents and purposes, they should be, quote-unquote, running away with the NFC South. Uh, but they should be, like, 7-4. and four. Um, Yeah, so... So it is, that's what makes Atlanta so frustrating. Like, I'm not frustrated about the Panthers because they suck. I'm not frustrated by, um, you know, the Bears because they're not, they're not supposed to be good. Well, they were supposed to be good, but they're not. Um, it's, it's why Atlanta is so frustrating every week. It's because they have talent. They're sneaky, a good team, but Arthur Smith isn't great. But, it, but I, I said it a few weeks ago, if you still get mad at Arthur Smith, that's a you problem. You know, what's, you know what he's going to do, and it's not going to be great. Well, now I've hidden all those messages. Damn it. 
<laughs> Evan's like, now I've just made it worse. I have made it worse. Why can't I make it better? Engage with your audience. Engage with your audience. Um, all right, let me double check my push notifications, see if uh, Maybe there's this will anything. Help. Maybe this will help. Uh, Unvan Tony, yes. <laughs> I wrote to Unvan Tony. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's see what we got going on. Push notifications. Zeke is active. Brees Hall active. Oh, these are the officially active reports. Keenan Allen, Tank Dell, Trey McBride active. Jaden Reed toward, trending towards playing. Uh, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. I have too many teams. All right, that's that. Let's see if I can build a sleeper. Let's 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 do a, a sleeper um, parlay while we wait. While we're while we're waiting for more questions, I wish I could put it up on the screen, but I can't do this on the website. I have to do it on my phone. Ooh, pick on sale. C.J. Stroud, twenty-two percent off, two hundred fifteen passing yards. Brian Robinson, th oh, 32 and a half rushing yards versus Miami. Ugh. I don't know if I'll take the over on. I'll take the over on that. I'll take that little gimme. All right. So let's see what we got going on here. Um, Kyler Murray, 31 rush yards at Pittsburgh. I feel like that's an over, right? I have added Tony as a moderator because it would let me do that. <laughs> Band moderator. Band <laughs> moderator Tony Martin. We shall see. Who said no? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said no. Have a great night, uh, Manny. Have a great rest of your week. Uh, good luck to you, and good luck to everybody. Um, we're in that. Oh, it's nine fifty-eight. Yeah. We got football to watch. Are there any last-second questions? I'm not going to try to build a parlay right now. That's what I always appreciate about the TH Fantasy Boys. It's because trying to build build bets, it just it it feels too much like homework to me. Like you're like, oh, you have to go through all of this shit just to figure out what I'm doing. Like, no, thank you. Cereal first. Uh, Cereal first. That's how you know how much milk to put in. All right. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Good luck, everybody. I love you 